losing a mayor, that means we're losing a police commissioner, et cetera, et cetera, possibly, and that means that change is about to come. How is that change gonna affect our community? That's what is critical. Maybe we have to set up small groups throughout the city and the neighborhoods that will specifically just have the responsibility of evaluating and being watchful citizens as it relates to this. To welcome each of you to our, our updated forum on the uh, Department of Justice. Uh, recommendations that were given and uh, on behalf of NAM. I'm Matthew Smith, president in Philadelphia. Mr. Paul Fevers is our board chair lady. And we have some folks at NAM for staying on top of this uh, issue and trying to communicate the importance to everyone in the community. I think as Paula pointed out, one of the things we have to remember is that despite the fact that the Justice Department has handed us a pretty good blueprint for some of the changes that are necessary in our police department, it's going to be up to us to make sure that this all happens. Once the Justice Department wraps up with the third uh, part of the review, and I think now this is a good time for me just to give you a, a sense of how this is, this is going to unfold over the next year or so. This report on the shootings was issued um, back in March of this year. So uh, there are three parts of it. The initial report lays out the problems that the Justice Department investigators found with the police department. Um, if we can get those officers' attention before they go onto the street or before they become um, sort of messed up with all the old school mentality, we have a much better chance of dealing with them. So I've got some very good relationships with some of the young people who are in our police academy now with the hopes of watching them as they go through the process and seeing, in fact, if there is a change in the mentality, not just the rules and regulations uh, that, that our officers follow. So in that sense, we, we are moving forward, and that's a good thing. Uh, it's going to take quite some time. I'm sorry, yes, Paul? Yes, Paul. Well, I'm listening to you, and if you're saying that um, it's going to take some time for us to actually be able to visibly see change based on the new recruits that will be coming out of the academy, um, are you privy to what changes have been made in the academy as relates to training? Because I heard you um, make the example a few moments ago about the police saying, sir, and, and you know, want to do combat, would you? That's not what we experience in the black community, black and brown community. There's no sir. There's a fear from particularly European police officers, white police officers, when they see us, um, it's institutionalized, far too many of them, so I'm not going to make, give any reference to the minority of them that might consider us as a sir or a ma'am, because the majority of them don't. When they see us, there's a fear, and the first thing they want to do is attack. So what we need to know if there's any update regarding that mentality. Now, do you know if that's the case? And I disagree with you on the point of the three-day. I think just like the rest of us, when they lock us up, they throw us in there, and they want to say, what happened? We're not going to let you go until you tell us what happened. They interrogate us immediately. Am I right? Yes. So why would a police officer huh. get three days to think about what he did or she has done? Right. That's not fair. Right. Well, let me back up to, uh, to, your, to your first point. The, in terms of changing the rules for the officers who are already on our force, the rules, once Commissioner Ramsey rewrites them and they're in place, all of the officers on our force, whether they're just out of the academy or not, will, are going to have to adhere to those rules. If they don't, then there's going to be consequences to that. Uh, my point was more to the idea that changing the overall mentality of policing, of law enforcement as a group, 
is a much longer thing than just you know a few recommendations that come out. Um, so I, I think that's going to take some time. And um, the point I was also trying to make is that I want to make certain that we begin to work with those officers just as soon as they come out of the academy. One of the things that I liked in a couple of the young officers I um, have talked to so far who are in the academy is that they want to talk, they want to learn directly from folks in the community. They don't just want to learn to hear what's happening and, and get the rules from the police. They want to really talk directly to the people that they will be working in their community. And that, to me, that's a good thing that we want to encourage. If we can bring those folks and uh, make them understand how to police our communities in a more humane manner, I think we all benefit from that. Has the attitude of the FOP changed no. regarding the 91? No, okay. it has not. Can you no. share with the community what their position is? Sure. Uh, as, I, as I was discussing earlier, the, the FOP has uh, filed an unfair labor charge against the uh, uh, police department and the city to uh, try and roll back some of the changes. They're in particular upset about the naming of the officers within three days. Uh, they seem to feel that this is gonna put officers in physical danger, et cetera. Um, despite the fact that this has happened in many other police departments around the country, and there's virtually no evidence whatsoever of any type of physical backlash. Mm -hmm. But again, this is what you're beginning to see now, and, and frankly, even Commissioner Ramsey, I've heard him uh, Fox News talking about, uh, well, you know, the Black Lives Matter people shouldn't be doing this or they shouldn't be doing that. Their police departments now, even the more progressive ones, are starting to give you a little bit of backlash now because there, there seems to be this notion that there's a, a war on police uh, going on in our communities when I, I think that's far from the truth. That's right. But um, our FOP here, and, and I, I have the, the fortune of, of knowing and dealing with some other you police union people at other places around the country, because I'm involved with our national group, our FOP here is considerably more conservative and old school, to be yes, quite frank. Yes, it is. That. There are other unions who, who can deal with this. Certainly there's going to be tension always between police and community, and people are going to you know, fuss about this and that. But there are other places around our country where um, police officers and even union officials have recognized the need that they need to connect directly with the people that they serve and have a much different attitude than we have here. Um, that's something we're going to have to work on pretty much. So, and how, when they shoot and how they make the decisions, you've got changes to the tools that the officers are actually going to have. As I said, part of the problem here is our officers don't have uh, a whole full set of tools in which to deal with issues and they're not trained on using them. So they're going to be trained better in ground fighting tactics. We're going to also find uh, officers, more officers are going to be carrying tasers and learning to use them properly. Uh, and then on the visibility side, all of those uses of force, all of the rules for that, the police directives and all of that should become public and available for all of you to see. Uh, I, I'm allowed to see those now because of the commission and the executive order that we operate under. For years, frankly, we've also told the police department, you need to make the directives and the rules for use of force and everything else public so people can see exactly what the rules are. Um, yes. That's something that also should be happening. The department's working on that as well. Transparent. What did they say about that? I'm sorry? What did they say about that, making it public? Yeah, the police department is working on doing that and trying to find that uh, particular recommendation here. Yeah, they're, they, they're not against that. In fact, uh, Ramsey and the current administration are dedicated to putting all of the recommendations into place. And as far as I know, um, presumptive Mayor Kenny is on, is on board with that as well, from what I know from talking to the people that I know in this camp. Um, so, it's going to take, as I said, these are uh, a pretty comprehensive set of recommendations that cover everything from training to investigations to transparency. It's going to take quite some time for this all to get put into place. The Justice Department itself will be coming back here for their second of three reports 
uh, probably sometime this fall. I'll make sure that everyone knows when that's going to occur and that you guys get a chance to be able to speak directly to them in a public forum as you did when they came here back uh, last July. That's a very important part of it. Um, they'll issue a second report that says, okay, this is how the city has done on the recommendations that we, we put into play. And in fact, the Justice Department investigators are in contact weekly with the police department now as they're stepping through all those things. So it's not like they just came here in March and they're going to come back in October. Um, they, this is pretty much a weekly thing. The police department has actually put a captain in charge of doing nothing but uh, putting all of this together. So they'll be back in um, October for a second interim report. There'll be a final interim report uh, middle of next year, and then they're gone. Wow. And then it's up to us to make certain that whatever's left at that point, uh, or frankly, whatever has been done and not been done well enough, uh, it's going to be up to us to continue to pressure the, the police department, the <coughs> justice department, and everyone else to, to continue that process. Um, I want to talk about one area that I think we're really going to need to um, pressure the police department heavily on here, and that's body cameras. Mm. Part of the um, changes that we're trying to um, see through in the department here involve the use of body cameras by our officers. Uh, last. I guess almost a year ago now, the off, some of the officers in the 22nd District began wearing mm -hmm. some body cameras and testing out different systems. Um, that is now moving forward. The city is very soon going to be contracting with one of those three vendors to actually do uh, the body cameras. The department's plan at the moment is to roll out uh, a total of 4,000 body cameras to our officers over the next year year and a half or so. Yeah, I think they have about five, uh, half a million dollars in place to do this. Now, what's on the commissioner's table at this time is the policy for those body cameras. Mm -hmm. One of the recommendations in the President's Task Force report, which we talked about a little bit less than this, with this DOJ report, because this is very specific to Philadelphia, but the President's Task Force that Ramsey chaired is also very important to what we're doing. One of the recommendations in that report says that when you develop a policy, you need to involve the community in the development of the policy, not after it's done. That's right. The police department is right now writing a body camera policy, but we're not involved, nope. you're not involved, none of the interest groups who have weighed in on this around the country, the ACLUs, the NAACPs, various other groups, none of those groups were involved in the formulation of the policy. Mm. So, once the policy comes out, and we look at it, if we have problems with it, if, for example, the retention period, the time that we save the tapes that come from those body cameras, is not long enough, that's going to be a problem. That's right. If the police commissioner says, um, I'm only going to hold these, the, vid, the footage from these video uh, body cameras for 30 days, then guess what? If something happens after 30 days, if you or a relative or, or someone from the commission comes to them and says, I have a person who filed a complaint on um, you know, January 31st and I come to you on February 2nd, they're going to say, oh, I'm sorry, we erased that footage, we didn't save that, it's gone now, we can't use that. So, all this time, we the public have been told that these body cameras are going to provide us with yet another view on what our officers are doing. This is going to add to our ability to see exactly what actions they're taking. But, guess what? It won't be very useful if I, the retention period for that footage is not very long. So that's one area that we're going to have to pressure the department heavily on. Um, I have here a letter. I'm finding, so, I'm finding many, so many different mentalities that it, 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 it seems hard. hard. It seems, it seems challenging. I don't say it's hard because the only thing hard is the concrete that we walk on. Everything else is a challenge. Um, um, 
So, 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 I'm ready for, I'm this, ready challenge. for this challenge. And I was built, and I was built 